What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. Today we are working on the boogie van. This is part two of the rust repair. I'm concentrating with this video on how to weld thin sheet metal with a MIG welder. That's something that a lot of you guys have been asking me about, so here it is. We're gonna weld four feet, this whole thing, totally straight, and we're not gonna warp it too much. You're gonna see the technique that I like to use to control distortion on a panel like this with MIG welding. I wouldn't wanna TIG weld something like this because there's no access. There's no access to the backside. There's a full inner rocker back here. It's totally kind of a hidden spot. So I'm gonna take my time and show you the technique I like to use with a MIG welder on thin sheet metal right now. Make it custom. Let's do it. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into the video. All right, so we got it all cut out here, exposed the inner rocker. Do have a little bit more rust in the wheel lip than uh, I anticipated once we took this trim off. I just wanted to go over what tools I use to get this off. I've tried a bunch of different ways over the years. I've tried spot weld drills. This is how I do it. I just clean this thing off as much as I can with a wire wheel so that I can see the dimples of the spot welds. You'll see a little dimple in the outer metal where each spot weld is. I just use a regular drill bit, like a large drill bit. I think this one's about a 3 8 and I just stick it right in the dimple of the spot weld and drill a little bit. Not all the way through, you're not waiting for it to break away or anything, because I don't want to drill through that back panel. You see, none of these went right through. They're not fully released when you drill them, but then you come along with a air hammer like this. This is just a cheap air hammer. And this is the spot weld breaker tool. If you loosen them up with the drill bit, they come off like butter with this thing. So that's how I peel it off. I cut everything off with a zip cut. You saw that. And then I go, I see this little strip that's still left here. Drill all the spot welds with my drill. And then I take it off with the air hammer, like I said. Then I just go ahead and clean it with a wire wheel. Get all the rust out of there, out of any of the pits. You see in the time lapse that I took my time. This has got some gravel guard on it. You gotta take your time with this. Heat is the enemy. This is a long, straight, thin piece of metal. So I'm using a paint stripper disc. Call them, people call them cookie discs or spaghetti discs. Basically, it strips the paint, doesn't mess up the metal, but if you stay there too long, especially if you're trying to take away gravel guard, it'll heat it up and uh, the heat will warp the edge. You wanna keep this as straight as you can. See, I didn't warp it? That's important, so take your time, kinda move along, go back and forth, slowly take away whatever paint to expose this because you can easily warp that, especially when it's a cut edge. Then you're ready to start fitting up the panel. Let me just grab the panel here. There it is. So I left a little bit so that I can actually re-scribe and cut exactly where my panel fits up. I'm gonna continue to actually strip this down and get some more rust out. I'm gonna do this rocker here as well. The other thing I'm gonna do is prep the inside of the panels like this one. It's gonna have to be, you know, get some paint on the inside here. I'm gonna use weld through primer because I'm gonna to have to weld through this. I'm gonna drill holes in this lip and spot weld it with the MIG back where it was factory spot welded. So I just wanted to go over that. Those are the tools I'm using. Okay, let's keep going. So I just want to show you guys something. When we were talking about drilling out spot welds and the way I drill them out on a van that were, you know, the rusty chunks that were cutting off where you don't need to save it, drilling out spot welds on something else that you're gonna keep, there's a replacement patch panel that I cut out of another van. Obviously they fit the best because they're actual GM pieces. But anyway, I want to drill the spot welds and remove this outer skin from its inner because I think the inner's on not too bad on that but either way you've got to separate them to install them. The way that I like to do it is 
I'm gonna drill straight through these. Like, do you see each one of those? Each spot weld like that? I'm gonna take a small drill bit, drill right in the center of each one so that I can punch through and then I'll go through with a uh, slightly larger drill bit and then just get the rest of the spot weld. I find it's the cleanest, easiest way. If you pre-drill them with something really tiny, then your bit doesn't walk around because you're kind of trying to drill right on top of a you know hard little spot weld. And then that way you'll be able to you know spot weld them all in the factory spots. I'm probably gonna use MIG on this to spot weld them back in. It'll all look cherry. So there's a bit of sound deadening seam sealer type stuff that we're gonna have to get off of there. Bunch of gravel guard, but this stayed nice and uh, complete. We didn't really mess it up too much. A little bit of bending where we used a little chisel type tool to separate the spot welds just to break that last little bit. You can see the flange has all these nice holes that we can use for welding it back on. That's how I like to do it. Now I'm just gonna clean it up, get it kind of trimmed to the exact shape that I need, and then we'll start marking it on the van, make our cuts. I did pull the interior stuff out of there. This is right where that wheel well is. So there's nothing down there that can burn. I'm gonna wet it though, just so that sparks don't travel at all and uh, put a welding blanket in there. All right, so this is where I'm at. I got everything kind of trimmed out. I'm sort of setting myself up for all the patch panels that we're doing here. The um, inner wheel lip here, like our outer skin goes over this inner wheel lip. There's a piece of rust right here that I'm gonna have to replace. So I kind of work from the inside out. Any of the places that have rust that my outer panels attach to, obviously those things have to be done first. So there's a little bit of rust here. We've got some deep pitting. I was lucky enough to be able to cut that piece off of the same van. You saw me kind of dissect that inner and outer off that small front wheel lip, and that's this piece right here. So it's actually got this flange on it. This piece here, you didn't even see that because it was fully rusty and gone. This one is gonna go in right about there. So I'm gonna patch that in. I'm gonna make a little piece for here. And then I'm also gonna have to rebuild this kind of door jam inner right there. You just saw me make the rocker much in the same way that I did on part one, where I rolled this and used the brake to make this lower quarter piece. I made this rocker. So here is my new rocker. That top flange is obviously gonna need to be trimmed to be welded right along this area here. Pretty happy with the way that one fits. I mean, check that out. It's gonna be perfect. That's where I'm at. So uh, right now I'm just gonna hop to it, get on patching in this inner piece, this inner piece, and this door jam inner piece. And then we'll talk about it again and continue on with the outer sheet metal. We're also gonna do a little bit of uh, prep right after that. Get everything clean, make sure that uh, we get weld through zinc primer on everything and just protect this thing as best we can because we know they rust out. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so we got this piece in here. I did have to pie cut this a little bit. I guess the difference between this piece on the other van and this van is the position this was spot welded to this. So rather than sever all those spot welds, I did pie cut that just a little and tip this edge in so that we had kind of the nice profile here. That's all good, it's all in there. This piece kind of laps in behind just a little bit. So I welded that all in. I used the planching hammer a little, it probably didn't need to, but uh, just gave it a tiny bit of shape because it does have a little bit of shape, a little bit on the shrinker. And then this is just a broke piece of 16 gauge. This doesn't even actually spot weld to the outside. It's just a flange that comes down. That's all that is. I welded it on the back side so I wouldn't have a ton of grinding here. Just had to grind a little bit of the penetration off. Cut this lip off. I'm gonna have to cut more of this because I'm gonna probably weld right on this corner edge right up top here. Uh, so this flange will be gone. That's where our rocker is gonna go, just like that. And then our side panels. I do wanna prep all this obviously before we weld it, but I'm gonna actually take all the patch panels and uh, temporarily kind of set them on and fit them as uh, good as I can. And then we'll be able to kind of mark out where all those pieces are gonna go. And uh, I can do some trimming. I'm gonna use rust mort. Rust mort is a rust converter. It's like this acidic thing that eats right into the uh, cancer and the rust. Any of this stuff that's just like a little bit pitted, it just kills it. It just murders it. So there's no more rust cancer in there. So I'm gonna spray that on everything and then zinc prime everything. And then uh, we'll do our final trim and start installing. I also wanna say, I know a lot of you guys are watching this for uh, some MIG welding on sheet metal tricks tips, techniques, that kind of thing. Rather than go over it on every little piece, I was gonna do most of my kind of explanations on the MIG welding sheet metal side of it when we do the outer panels. This stuff is, it's pretty strong because it's like interior sheet metal. It's also not super important how perfect that looks. Like there's nothing, there's no structure behind that. So it's gonna be more of a challenge to do the outer sheet metal. And that's when I'm gonna do the explanation and the technique of welding thin sheet metal once we get to the outer side. So bear with me. I know that we're halfway through the video, but we're gonna get there. Okay, so now that I'm waiting for that rust mort to dry, I'm gonna make the flanges for these repair panels. I've got my rocker and uh, this is my lower quarter panel and they come together where they come together on the van. Whoops, they both had flanges there. So those flanges, those tipped edges, because this is 16 gauge, I mean, you could definitely do it, but um, it would be a ton of work to tip that flange and shrink the flange and make it, you know, perfect on the edge. 18 gauge, you could probably do it pretty simply. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is uh, I just made the flanges. I'm gonna do the final trim after it's welded, but uh, leave this much material on it as I do my corner weld. The reason being is that it's just gonna hold it a lot better. So I'll be able to weld that corner and then trim this flange. Then if there is a little bit of shrinking or stretching just to get it super perfect, it's already in the shape. So you'll see this 16 gauge can take the heat. It'll look really, really nice. That also allows me to make both sides and match up this edge. So what I'm gonna do and what I was using those vice grips I dropped for was to just vice grip these two pieces together. Here's my 
rocker flange and my sill flange or um, quarter panel flange. So I'm just gonna stick those two pieces together, clamp them, and then uh, I'll grind them so they're exact profile and those two pieces will be perfect. A coach builder would tip the edge. This is kind of a cheat. It's just something I do. It doesn't matter to me. So <laughs> it'll be plenty, plenty strong. Okay, so something I wanted to mention is uh, I just fusion welded this with TIG. I'm just using a 1 tungsten and about, I think 80 amps, just pulsing it with my foot a little bit. The nice thing about this is that there's very little cleanup. You got lots of penetration and uh, the heat is nice and even. So I didn't warp the crap out of this at all. It's uh, partially because it's 16 gauge. So I just tacked in a bunch of spots until I was about three quarters of an inch apart and then just went for it. I did the same thing on this side. I did get a tiny bit of porosity right down there. So I'll have to uh, fill that up once I grind it. But you can see that uh, it's already kind of just rounds it over, you know, if you have a nice fit. So lots of penetration on the back side, nice and strong. That's how I make my flanges. And you can still tweak it once I actually trim this to about a three quarter inch flange, maybe a little less. If we have to shrink or stretch at all, you can still do that. So that's why I like to do it that way. Okay, so I did a few coats of the rust mort. The way to use it is you, that you keep it wet and make sure all the rust is converted. It all turns black like this. Yeah, just keep it wet, do multiple coats if you need it, and then go ahead and uh, spray a little bit of water to convert this acid. I guess not convert it, but you have to equalize it or whatever it's called. Somebody correct me. You spray it with a base, which is water, and that stops the process. And then you gotta make sure it's really dry. I'm gonna use a brush to get right in here. I can't right now, cause I just got two hands, not three. Spray with water, get it all equalized and then brush it and keep soaking it with water. That should be it. Once it's all totally dry, then we can go ahead and uh, apply, well, I'm probably gonna scuff it up a little bit and then just apply our zinc primer, well, zinc weld through primer on all the areas.
All right, so we got all the panels tacked on. This is sort of the first round of tacking. I just wanna talk about, you know, how to install these panels. Basically what I did there and what you saw, it's pretty obvious. I just put the panel on where it was gonna be and marked it, cut it. But the thing you need to think about when you are doing that, when you are marking this and cutting it, you need to think about whether or not the panel is overlapping old material and whether or not um, the panel will shift up a touch by the thickness of the material or a little bit more uh, when you actually set it into place or whether it won't. So in the case of this rocker, this panel went straight in because there was no material on the bottom. It, it wasn't overlapping anything. I had already cut that stuff away. So when I marked this, that was the cut. That was the perfect cut. Now on this wheel arch, it was hung up a little bit on the bottom here. So you need to expect that it's gonna move up a touch. Those are the kinds of things you just wanna think about before you make your cut because it really sucks to have to be tacking along and then uh, all of a sudden, oh, you gotta cut a little bit more because it started overlapping. That's all I really gotta say about that. I haven't tagged down this inside edge yet. I haven't done any of the spot welds. You know, I'm clamped in place. As you can see, it is pretty good. I'm using a 110 volt welder with 023 wire. I've got it turned up a little bit so that I can do really quick tacks like zap and it's it's hot but it went and did that really fast so that it's not putting a ton of heat into it. I don't know if you can see like reflection wise there's almost no warping you can see kind of my arm in there and that's the key to MIG welding on patches. You want as little heat as you can go into the panel. That doesn't mean put your welder to its coolest setting that means you want quick welds that are hot so that they penetrate and they can just be zap and that's it. That's something that you gotta know is that to put less heat in, you sometimes have to have your machine up a little bit. I know it sounds weird. It's the same thing with TIG welding. Some guys struggle because they're welding so slow and they got such little heat, they're trying to put such little heat into it. Well, guess what? You're going too slow and it's not hot enough. So you're sitting there adding so much heat to warm up the metal enough. It's the same thing with MIG welding. You turn your machine up, you get a nice tight gaps. The tighter the gap, the better. The more consistent your gaps, the better. Same thing with TIG welding and MIG welding. You want your fit to be as tight and as consistent as possible so that your welds can be as tight and as consistent as possible. Consistency is key. So what I'm gonna do next, all these ones I've, I've lined up so that I can feel anything. Even if you don't really feel anything, there could be a little bit of panel discrepancy and that's something that we're going to go over when we grind everything. If it didn't line up perfect, don't grind until you know your weld totally disappears. If it didn't line up perfect, that's okay. As long as it's close, it's more important to leave the weld on so it's strong. You don't want to grind it away so that the metal's thin. That's something everybody does. You'll see on mine too is that one of these panels came up a touch, like just a little bit. I'm only I'm going to stop the weld at the base material, whatever side of this it hits first. So if I'm grinding this and say this is a little bit proud, I'll grind it. And then if it drops down on the other side of the weld, I didn't line it up perfect. That's okay. It's close and it's gonna get a tiny bit of filler and whatever, but don't grind too far. You'll get better at lining it up as you go along, but it's important not to grind too far. If it was something where I had access to the backside, and we had a little bit of panel misalignment, we could tack everything, grind the tips of all the welds down, and then I could go with the dolly on the back side and a hammer on the front side, and I could line up all those panels. And then, yes, when you grind away your weld, you're damn right, it's perfect. But just take your time. We're gonna weld all this, tack these a bunch more times until we've got tacks every you know, inch or so. Yeah, maybe every inch or so, and that's to keep the panel alignment. If you tack one spot here, it could, you know, heat up this side more than this side and you could get a, the panel expanding or pulling away, that sort of deal. So that's why we're gonna tack everything everywhere so that it's held nice and tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start stacking my tacks. I'm gonna tack right on the other side of this tack and I'm gonna let it cool with some air. Some people don't like that. Some people say don't cool your welds and stuff, but yes, it makes it a little bit more brittle. And the reason that would mess you up is if you're trying to hammer it. If you're trying to hammer stretch a weld back out that you've cooled with air and it's kind of brittle and it's MIG welded, MIG, weld, MIG welds are a little bit more hard than TIG welds anyway. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're not hammering the welds. 
We're more concerned about panel distortion. So I'm gonna tack on the other side of this weld. I'm gonna let it cool. I'm gonna tack on the other side of this weld. I'm gonna let it cool. I'm gonna do that all the way. And I mean, it takes time. It takes time to not warp the shit out of it. What you can do is just be efficient in it, tack, be ready to cool it. You're cooling that one, you're already moved over, tack. You're cooling that one, you're already moved over, tack. You just work at it the whole way. It's gonna look really funny and it's gonna look really fast when you see it on time-lapse, but that's all I'm doing. You make sure everything's lined up as good as you can be. Use your finger and feel that everything is lined up nice. That's lined up nice, I'll do a tack. That's lined up nice, I'll do a tack. You know, maybe this one's a little bit above this one. I'll use the, the nozzle of the welder and I'll press down a little bit until they line up perfect and do a tack. That's my technique. You're about to see it. Yeah, everything's going good with this van. That's, that's just, uh, that's how I do MIG welding when I can't get to the backside. All right, let's do it. I'm all welded up, got everything done. You saw there the technique, you kind of tack, 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 cool as you're going, and then you just keep stacking those tacks right onto the next one. And uh, they've got good penetration. I know that, I know that I've seen the backside of welding like this, it's, uh, it's all good. And the best part about it is that there's not much for warpage. You can see a tiny, tiny ripple almost in the pattern of the initial set of tacks, but you'll see once we grind it, there's like, I'll put a straight edge on that. You'll be able to see it's, it's pretty damn good. Now I'm just gonna grind it all up. Now, grinding technique, you can use an angle grinder. I don't recommend it, but uh, I sometimes do. Just to grind the tips of these welds off, it just saves some of the discs, but just grind the tips of the welds off. You can use a harsher grit, like 36 or something to grind the tips, but I like to use 80 grit when I know I'm gonna get down and touch the metal. I use 80 grit on a three inch roll lock. Everybody asks what kind of discs I like. These are 3M Cubitron discs, they're purple and they are extremely hard, they stay extremely sharp, they last better than any disc I've ever used, and that's no joke, they're really expensive. Only, I think only 15 come in a box, but they're, they're worth it, they last 
you know, three times as long as anything else, and they're probably only double the price. So I like Cubitron 3M discs, that's what I use. And then after we go over all the welds with this, there might be a couple of pinholes that I have to weld up, but then I'll use a DA with 80 grit on it, and we'll finish it out. It'll get this finished like this. All right, we're done grinding. I took it to 80 grit on the DAs. I like to use just these angle die grinders. I'm actually gonna show you guys a little trick here. Not really a trick, but a way I save money. So I've got a three inch angle die grinder and I've got a two inch angle die grinder and then I've got one that I've even cut a little bit smaller. It's like inch and a half maybe. The different sizes are nice for getting into different spots obviously, but with those Cubitron discs, I'll use them on the three inch and then I don't buy two inch ones, I just cut them down because usually you only really wear the edge and those Cubitron ones last so long that like the edge will wear out before the center. So I just cut them down and then I cut them down again. I don't have to buy this for the other ones. So that's just a way of me being cheap. Anyway, this is how it turned out. It's pretty dang good if I do say so myself. I'm not gonna do any Bondo just because I don't do Bondo. I hate it, send that out for people. <laughs> I'll do it on some things, but anyway, we're not a, a body shop. So I'm just gonna paint this stuff with rattle can, satin black, and then the bottom's gonna get the same kind of undercoating that it used to have, and that's it. This guy's got uh, a few more steps to go with the metalwork, but this is just step one. So we're taking care of this side and uh, you know the corners of the other door, that'll come later. So step at a time, it's all good. Like I said, this is all just um, the three inch roll lock. I did use the angle grinder to knock down the welds. If you're comfortable being really steady with the angle grinder, so you do not touch the sheet metal, you're just knocking the tips off of the weld, then go ahead and use it. It's awesome because uh, it's pretty aggressive and you can really save yourself a lot of time using that first if you are in a spot where you can be steady. So I'm gonna show you, like I said, the warpage factor here. I don't know if you can see that. Like there's a slight bow in the outside of the body kind of as per stock, but, but look at that. There's no, no warpage. Or I would say little to no warpage. You know, everything moves a little bit, but this stuff stayed 
Beautiful. There's gonna be a little bit of Bondo if he wants to paint this lower rocker area, but I'm pretty sure this is just gonna disappear as soon as I run the undercoating on it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm just gonna tape it all off, spray some uh, rust inhibiting black paint on everything, and then I'm gonna tape it off for undercoat, and that's it. So I hope you guys learned something on this stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and undercoat it now. All right, well that's it for the van. We got uh, got her all done. I'm super happy with the repair. I think it turned out wicked. You can't even tell. That's just bare metal feathered in. I mean, it's just flat black. Flat black hides a lot of sin. But yeah, I'm super stoked. There's no Bondo in that. It's as close as I could get without putting filler on it. All of it turned out awesome. There's no oil canning in anything. It's wicked. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit about MIG welding on sheet metal and uh, a little bit on how to repair a van, I guess. So thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom, everybody. Appreciate your comments, your likes, everything. We're gonna be moving shops in a couple weeks. I'm trying to just burn in here. After this, I'm gonna get onto the Model A. Shortly after that, we're just gonna move shops. So hopefully we'll have a couple videos for you guys during those couple of weeks that we're moving. Keep you guys going. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Tell your friends, we're here twice a week. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.